Hi, welcome back. Well, we've made a lot of progress here yesterday, and now it's time to continue. But first things first, before I can get this old TARDIS all spruced up and looking pretty again, I'm going to need a few extra resources. And to do that, I'm going to need some life insurance. I'm also going to need a new type of tool. One underrated feature of the Philosopher's Stone is the ability to transmute objects as they exist in the world. From dirt to sand. Isn't that lovely? Also worth noting is the Curio Slots mod. Ah uh, yes, more equipment slots. Allows me to put my ring and my power source safely into here where they won't be taking up any slots in my inventory. Delicious. I see you over there, Bone Boy. Take that. And that. And that. Now I have a machine gun. Ho, ho, ho. Next comes one of my favorite Project E tools. This is the Destruction Catalyst. Think of it like a vein mining device, but instead of using tool durability, it uses EMC. Charge it up. Let her rip. <laughs> Bingo. Oh, this will be important for later. Let's cook up some of that zinc. Well, there's nothing for it. Some of the materials I'm going to need can only be found in the nether. But I'm not going to build a portal down here, no. Ha <laughs> ha! You gotta love it. Alright then. Next stop, another fortress. This may take a while. Ah, bingo. And a sp is that a spawner? Yes, it is. Ooh. Get machine gunned. Now all I need is a few blaze rods. Just one ought to do it. Blaze rods in hand. Let's get out of here. Ah, I looked at an Enderman. Well, watch this. Hmm, <laughs> they seem to have attacked the zombie pigmen in doing this. But that Enderman has got to go. Just gonna need a chunklin' or two of quartz. There we go. I think it's about time I got this old TARDIS in proper working order. First tool in the process is going to be this Alembic. It's a specialty item that allows you to cook up a few things that we'll need to use as ingredients for TARDIS components. It requires some water and some fuel. Cooking a stack of saplings in the Alembic will yield an important item. Circuit paste. This is useful for constructing exotronic circuitry. The Alembic can also be used to melt down cinnabar. This can be used for another important component. Mercury. I don't know why mercury is important in such an advanced futuristic machine such as the TARDIS, but I think it has something to do with some old 60s thing. The next item we're going to need to use to craft our components is a specialty item called the Quantoscope. 
I don't know why this is particularly necessary instead of just using a crafting table, but it is part of the process. And the quantoscope does technically bake everything that you put into it, adding more time to the process. But we now have our fluid link, an extremely valuable component. Without it, we wouldn't be able to have power for flight. The TARDIS is powered by a special energy type called Artron. We now have our first Artron capacitor, and with the fluid link, we should be able to fill it. Let's install these components into the engine. Don't forget to turn it on. It's very important. I don't know why that doesn't happen by default. Let's install our Artron capacitor now. Excellent. Some of the best capacitors EMC can buy. This will be more than enough for now. It even comes with a manual. And with the manual in hand, you can hover over the various oddball confusing controls on this very tightly packed, but somewhat screen accurate control panel. Mm. Yes, what I'm looking for is the refueler. And now the TARDIS will charge with Artron up to its capacitor limit. Going to need a lot of this in order to fly. Of particular note is that while it may be tempting to build up a base in this already large, spacious area that you get when you first enter the TARDIS, it is actually a fool's journey because you can change the desktop theme. There's only two unlocked right now, and yes, it is possible to unlock more, but it's going to take a lot of Artron in order to do it. Alternatively, this is part of the ARS system. What is the ARS system, you might ask? Well, I'm glad you did, because this is how you build a sustainable, lasting base within a TARDIS. Check this out. First, we set the tablet to what we need. And then we right-click the tablet on this block. Bingo! A brand new corridor, and all I had to do was build this tablet and do a few clicks. If it sounds overpowered, it probably is, but I gotta admit, it's pretty fun. One of the better yet more technical features of the TARDIS mod is the ability to add your own designs to the ARS system. Watch this. This is an elevator shaft of my own design. Thanks to a simple elevator mod, can transfer from one floor to another in a flash. Now, it's entirely possible to go completely nuts and build an enormous maze within the TARDIS of all sorts of various rooms, hallways, and connecting corridors, but for my purposes, I tend to find that simplest is best. Don't want to have to do a whole lot of walking if I can avoid it. So with these three prefabricated rooms, I should be set for a simple but effective base. I know, right? It's like, wow. Ah, 
our Artron runneth over. Now that my permanent base is more or less ready to roll, it's time to move in some of my gizmos and gadgetry. Worth noting that the laboratory prefab in particular comes with a duplicate engine, which leads to the same engine thanks to transdimensional engineering, I bet. And also a duplicate monitor. The Neutronic Spectrometer. Very important piece of kit for unlocking new schematics. Fortunately, it requires another tool, which I will have to set about crafting. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? Because I'm thinking what I'm thinking if I'm thinking what you're thinking. Aha! <laughs> well, requires a bit of a learning curve, but more importantly, it can be used with the Neutronic Spectrometer. It can also be customized. Ah, my very own sonic screwdriver. And we're just getting started, too. Spectrometer works something like this. First, you put in an item, in this case, iron. This will unlock a new console unit for use with the TARDIS. Then, you have to transfer it to your sonic screwdriver, like so. Finally, you must insert the sonic screwdriver into the console with your schematic downloaded. Excellent. Now we can go over here to the monitor and see what we've come up with. And just like that, we've unlocked a new console unit. Each console unit is different, of course, with a different layout of controls. Some of them have built-in monitors, like this one. Usage of the TARDIS manual is key to figuring out what each of the little doodads on these consoles actually do. Some of them are more sensibly laid out than others. I like this one. Well, there's nothing wrong with the screen-accurate consoles, or even some of the more custom units. This one, to me at least, strikes a good balance between being large enough for Minecraft, and yet simple enough to understand what everything actually is at a glance. Much more easily memorized in a pinch. Color-coded coordinates, dials and switches that look like dials and switches. Now, this particular control room design, it's lovely, but although it is one of the better ones that are available, especially at random draw, I think it's time to give this old TARDIS a more personal touch. One of the things that you can do, although it requires some documentation, is to build your own custom interior and then save it as a proper schematic. Uh, this requires some data pack authorship, and you'll need to read up on how that works. There is a wiki for it, if you choose to do so yourself. I have done so. And with my new custom schematic uploaded, which I've already previously constructed off-screen, it's time that I made this TARDIS my own. Twenty years earlier. Now, pay attention to this warning. It is important. It means what it says. That is why I have put all my supplies in the ARS rooms. Those are not altered by this process. They'll be there when the new interior has been constructed. Let's go.
Of course, the process does take actual time. Gotta wait about... Hmm, just that many more seconds before the process is complete. And in the meantime... Looks like it's night out in the world of Minecraft. Time for a nap. Ah, what a nice nap. Unfortunately, it doesn't affect the rebuild timer on the TARDIS, so I'm going to have to occupy myself while it's busy reconstructing all its innards. Digging up some snow like I just don't know what I want to do with my time. Because my base is on the inside of a box that's bigger on the inside, and it's all being rebuilt for me. Don't even have to lift a finger. Did that earlier while you weren't looking. Alright, pay attention, because this is going to be important for later. Put some obsidian here. Toss a little bit of redstone here. And... Flux dust. This is going to come in very handy. Interior reconfiguration is complete. Let's step inside. I've always wondered why the doctor never had a front porch. Seems like a safety issue if you ask me. Right then, preparations are complete. Welcome. Welcome indeed to my TARDIS, featuring the concept of diagonals. Also featuring a lovely bedroom with a nightstand and True trans-dimensional engineering. Now we're thinking with portals. Compact, but neat. Yes, it has everything I'm going to need. And in the future, I may even expand a little bit. Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Until the next time.